Okay. We're looking at a Fisher Model 3582 positioner. Oh, this is an all mechanical positioner, and it's kind of a hard thing to understand until you see it in action. So I'm going to show you just by holding it, moving it around, how this thing works. First, we've got a flapper nozzle assembly right here, and then we've got a brass bellows connected to our I to P. It's going to inflate and deflate with our applied pressure. Now, it's hard for me to pull up on this to simulate inflation, so I'm just going to tilt the entire mechanism as though this were inflating and pushing it up. On the side, we've got a feedback arm that connects to your valve. So down, that's when the valve is shut, closed, and up, that's when the valve is open. That's assuming, of course, a direct action valve body. So I'm just going to go with this. Down is closed, up is open. So I'm going to hold it down like this to simulate a closed valve. We also have a flapper nozzle assembly. The flapper nozzle, again, is the detector. It detects when the system's out of balance. And with any pneumatic system, it doesn't matter if it's force balance or motion balance, the goal of that system is going to work as hard as it can to keep that flapper nozzle gap constant. So I'm going to start here where the flapper is fairly close to the nozzle but not quite touching it. We'll just see how things react. We'll do a thought experiment. So right now the valve is shut and there's no pressure being applied to our bellows. As I apply pressure from our I to P, the bellows fills up. That pushes up against this corner of the D-ring. That's going to rock the D-ring in this position. When it does that, what does my flapper do? Does it go closer to the nozzle or further closer. away? Closer. Closer, exactly. So pushing up there moves it closer to the nozzle. What's that? going to have an effect on. Raise the valve. Yeah. Raises the valve pressure, exactly. Valve pressure goes to the actuator. It's going to be air to open in this case, so it's lifting up the valve, and watch what happens. As the valve lifts up, notice what that does to the flapper. There's a valve lifting up, there's a valve closing. Once again, valve lifting up, valve closing. So as the valve lifts up, what's the flapper doing? Moving away. Moving, Moving away. Moving it away. So as this pressure goes up, flapper gets closer to the nozzle. As the valve moves up, flapper moves away from the nozzle. See how they have opposite effects? So watch what happens. I'm going to coordinate the two motions right now. They pay me extra money for this. So watch what happens. This starts to inflate, brings the flapper closer. Builds up pressure, valve moves up, flapper moves away. Increase the pressure more, flapper closer to nozzle. Valve moves up more, flapper moves away. It balances. Increase the pressure even more, flapper towards the nozzle. Valve goes up even more, flapper backs away. Motion balance system, like two dancers. One person steps forward, the other one steps back to keep the gap between them constant. This rises, and that brings the flapper close to the nozzle. Whoa! And that's not supposed to happen, except, of course, when you're on video. So, what happens here is, as this rises, pushes the flapper close to it. As the valve rises up, the flapper pulls away. So those two motions counter each other. All right, let's fix this for real. There we go. Now, here's where it gets more interesting. This is movable. Watch what happens when we position this flapper all the way horizontal. What happens here, the flapper is now maximally sensitive to the position of the bellows. Let me move this back down. So now if the bellows moves like this, even tiny motions of the bellows results in large motions of the flapper. But now, even large motions of the valve hardly move the flapper at all. So in other words, just tiny motions here cause the valve to have to move a long way. So if you want to increase your stroke, you move it up here. This is what moving this thing up here does, is increases the stroke of the valve. Now small changes in pressure result in big changes of valve motion. Watch what happens when I move this down here. Close to vertical, now this hardly has any effect on the flapper, and the valve motion has a huge effect on the flapper. So now it takes a lot of pressure swing here to get just a small motion out of the valve. We've just basically reduced the stroke of the valve. That's why it says increase valve stroke and then conversely be decreasing valve stroke down there. Now let's move it to the other side. This is reverse acting. So notice how before over on this side as the valve lifted up the flapper backed away. Now same thing as the valve lifts up, the flapper backs away, but notice what happens. As this bellows pumps up, that also backs the flapper away. So the only way we're going to get more pressure to the valve to lift it more is if this deflates instead of inflates. So as that deflates, brings the flapper closer, now the valve lifts up to balance. Deflates more, brings the flapper closer, valve lifts up to balance. Deflates more, brings the flapper closer, valve lifts up to balance. So now it's reverse acting. 
less pressure here, further open valve. Conversely, more pressure here backs the nozzle away, the valve has to go down to balance. Reverse action. It's a complicated beast to understand. And I guarantee you, you're probably not going to get it by listening to that brief explanation. Got to get your hands on it and play with it. Just run through thought experiments. What if this happens? Talk to yourself. Walk through the scenarios until you understand it. It's a complicated little beast, but they are very common. And it's pretty ingenious, actually. And whoever invented this thing is, is a pretty sharp person. But that's a Fisher 3582 pneumatic positioner.